is to the left. God's love is to the left. God's love is to the right. God's love is to the right. God's love shines bright all day. God's love shines bright all day. God's love when I sleep at night. God's love when I sleep at night. God loves me. God loves me. God loves me. God loves me. God's love is to the front. God's love is to the front. God's love has got your back. God's love has got your back. God's love is here and there. God's love is here and there. God's love is everywhere. God's love is everywhere. God loves me. God loves me. God loves me. God loves me. God's love is really high. God's love is really high. God's love is way down low. God's love is way down low. God's love is up and down. God's love is up and down. God's love is all around. God's love is all around. God loves me. God loves you. God loves me. God loves us all. God loves us all. He loves us all. Okay, boys and girls, this is the time to pray. Put your hands together. Be ready to think about our Father in heaven and our beautiful Savior and Holy Spirit. Father God, we praise you. We thank you. We thank you for how wonderful and merciful you are. We ask for forgiveness of our sins. We ask that you would help us to do what is right. We thank you for everything you do for us, things that we do and do not understand. We ask, Lord God, that you will hear our prayers, our needs, and our wants. Please, Lord God, we need you. We love you and we praise you. We thank you for all things. Boys and girls, this is the time to pause it and continue your prayer. Think about how you need him and how thankful you are for him. Jesus is everything to us. Daddy God is everything to us. The Holy Spirit, we ask that you fill us. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This is the memory verse of the week. What? Proverbs 1.8. Proverbs 1, 8. Listen. Listen, my son, to your father's instructions. Please take the time to stop the video and pray asking God to help you understand his word as you learn. And this is the testimony that God gave us eternal life and this life is in his son yeah this is the testimony that god gave us eternal life and this life is in his son whoever has the son has life whoever does not have the son of god does not have life jesus said Come on. 
Jacob had a big family, 12 sons in all. Joseph was the next to youngest son of the family, and his father loved him more than all his other sons. Jacob even gave Joseph a special colorful coat, showing that he was his favorite son. This made his brothers jo Joseph had some strange dreams. Once. He dreamed that he was in a field with his brothers, tying up bundles of grain. Everyone else's bundles of grain bowed to his. Another time, he dreamed that the sun, moon, and eleven stars all bowed down to him. When he told his brothers and father about these dreams, they weren't too happy. His father angrily told Joseph that these dreams would not come true. But Jacob kept Joseph's dreams in mind. Joseph's dreams only made his brothers angrier at him. Joseph may have been his father's favorite, but his brothers hated him and wanted to kill him. One day, Jacob sent Joseph to find his brothers who were out taking care of the sheep. Joseph's brothers saw him coming toward them. Here comes the dreamer, they said to each other. Now is our chance to finish him off. Let's kill him. The oldest brother, Reuben, did not want to kill Joseph so he said they should throw him into a deep hole and leave him there instead. Reuben had planned to come back later and save Joseph from the hole. But before he could do that, some people who were on their way to Egypt passed by. Joseph's brothers decided to sell him to these people. Joseph was tied up behind a camel and forced to walk hundreds of miles to Egypt, where they spoke a different language and worshipped fake gods. It was a strange new land, and Joseph was separated from his family. Joseph was sold as a slave to a man named Potiphar, who was a very important man in the land of Egypt. As a slave, Joseph did what he was told, 
and did a good job at his work. While working in Potiphar's home, he caught the eye of Potiphar's wife, who tried to get Joseph to sin. Joseph refused to sin and disobey God. Potiphar's wife was determined to get her way. One day, she grabbed Joseph and tried to make him sin. Joseph resisted and ran, but before he could get away, she grabbed his coat. Joseph took off his coat so he could escape. Potiphar's wife told her husband a lie about Joseph, and she used the coat he left behind as proof. Joseph was sent to jail because of the lie Potiphar's wife told. Not only had he been sold as a slave to Egypt, but now he had been thrown in jail for something he didn't do. Even while he was in jail, Joseph stayed true to God. God had big plans for him. While he was in that Egyptian jail, he became known for being wise and for explaining the meaning of people's dreams. One day, Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, had bad dreams that he did not understand. Determined to find out what they meant, he asked all his advisors, but they could not explain the dreams. One of Pharaoh's servants, who had been in jail recently, remembered Joseph's ability to understand dreams. Joseph was brought from jail and taken to Pharaoh. Pharaoh told Joseph everything that had happened in his strange and scary dreams. Joseph knew exactly what the dreams meant, and he carefully explained the dream to Pharaoh. Not only did Joseph tell Pharaoh that the dream meant that food wouldn't grow for seven years, but he also told him to start saving up food so that the people would be able to live. Pharaoh was impressed, and he honored Joseph. In fact, he made Joseph the second-in-command ruler over all of Egypt. Although he had been treated terribly by his family and left for dead, he had risen to power and greatness because God was with him. A few years later, Joseph was giving food to the people when his own brothers came to him for help. You can imagine how surprised they were to see their own little brother, whom they had left for dead, ruling one of the greatest countries in the world. Joseph brought his whole family to live in Egypt. Even though things had looked bad for Joseph, God turned it into good. At this point, please pause the video so you can read the passage. If you cannot read it, have a parent read it for you.
Okay, boys and girls, now is the time to stop and think about what the Lord has done for you, how he fights for you, how he helps you, and how much he loves you. And let's end our day with a game. Everybody, stand up! It's time to play Sit Down If Food Edition. Everybody loves good food. Let's find out what you have and have not eaten before. Each round I will say sit down if you have eaten a certain type of food. If you have, sit down. If you have not, stay standing. Last person standing wins. Ready? Here we go. Sit down if you have ever had anchovies on your pizza. If you have, sit down. Sit down if you have ever eaten sushi. Stay standing if you have not. Sit down if you like pickles on your cheeseburger. <laughs> Sit down if you dip your fries in ice cream. That is kind of a crazy one. Sit down if you love cheese dip. Yum. Sit down if you ate cereal this morning for breakfast. Who is still standing? Sit down if you have never drank soda. Sit down if you eat the cream in your Oreos first. Good job! Sit down if you love bacon. Just a few more. Sit down if you've ever baked a cake. Who are the bakers in the room? Sit down if you prefer pancakes over waffles. Last one, sit down if you love chocolate. Anyone left? Great job, everyone. Thanks for playing this tasty game. <laughs>